Hey you guys, thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. If if I'm to be totally honest about how this project went, I wasn't really super stoked about it. There was just a whole bunch of stuff that kept going wrong, whether it was me not having the right hardware or things not lining up quite right. And frankly, I think part is that part of that is just me going through this for the first time. Um, but so that you guys don't make the same mistakes I do going through it and can hopefully have a better experience than I did, uh, here are a couple of the things that I learned. So one, and this seems a little bit obvious, is really look through all the different hardware that you're gonna need. When I started uh, filming this episode and doing the project, I was opening the box and uh, ShopFox did not do a very good job specifying exactly what hardware was gonna be needed. And so I assumed that most of the wood screws I had on hand would be just fine and they weren't. Almost all of the heads were too small and they fit straight through and so I had to get kind of creative and I actually ended up using some of my great grandfather's fasteners, which is kind of cool in and of itself, but I had to really dig through stuff to try and find something that was gonna work with the, uh, uh, with the end point, with the uh, vise. Um, but really go through and look at your hardware and take an accounting of what you're gonna need before you start the project. And again, I know that sounds obvious. Uh, that was my fault for doing that, but make sure you do that. The second piece of advice that I would give you is to start from the inside out. And frankly, I mean, realistically, if you have the opportunity not to have your workbench put together yet and you're doing this from the very beginning, turn your tabletop upside down and work on it that way because it is going to be miles easier to put it together than when you're trying to fit under your workbench or around your workbench uh, and just hold everything up against gravity rather than letting gravity work with you and set it on there. If you don't have that luxury, do start from the back and you work your way up because that's where your tolerances are gonna stack up. Here's kind of what I ran into. So I did start by mounting the underside that's underneath right over here, but then what I did is I moved once I drilled all the holes out, um, which when you're drilling the holes out, I actually had one size too large on the screw and I think that turned out just fine because most of these are just through holes that you need to have. Uh, it's when you have everything else in here, the uh, mechanical components, whether it's uh, the major mount that comes here, the two pieces that mounted to this guy or this outside piece, those are what are gonna be keeping everything in line. And so I would actually go, um, I wouldn't worry too much about the actual exact positioning on these holes, just make sure it's close enough that it doesn't bind up. Um, but starting from the inside moving out, I went with this underside piece to this outside piece and then finished by putting the screws into this. Well, the problem is this guy turned out great in the end, but because I had already put these and drilled the pilot holes for the outside of this, it was not, uh, it doesn't line up and you can see this giant gap that I have right here and realistically I'm probably gonna have to go through and uh, redo this one or I would like to redo it so that it looks nicer. And I'm actually thinking about it, I may wanna have a little bit of a lip here so that when I've got a long piece of uh, lumber, I was looking, this is a two by six and the three quarter inch dogs, I'm thinking are gonna be too small to be putting in here and putting any amount of force on them. And so I'm gonna try and uh, get something that has a lip that sticks up or a two by eight so that it sticks up over the edge a little bit so that I can just put it right up against it and then have dogs throughout my workbench that I can use to butt up against it. But for this one, start on the inside, work your way out and just get it all the way through so that when you're finishing this outside piece, that is what is stacking up everything. And so you can make sure that everything lines up nice and smoothly. And then the last thing that I learned is uh, I would go with two by eights instead of two by sixes on this one because you saw a little bit earlier in the video that after I had finished using my Forstner bits, it uh, just cut through the edge a little bit. And I could go ahead and laminate something on the bottom there to give it a little bit of extra strength. But again, those holes are just for positioning and it's a pass through for the screw or through for the uh, rail and so it's not as important. So I'm gonna see how it holds up, but if I was to do this over again, I would go ahead and get a two by eight because it just gives you more flexibility all the way through, especially if you've got a two by four workbench and this particular shop Fox Vice. Well, thank you guys again for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, some of the pro sometimes projects just don't turn out quite the way you're hoping, but I am I know that this is gonna be a useful piece of equipment in the future as I'm working on future projects, and uh, I may go through and I'll remake it, and you guys may see that in future episodes. If you have any questions about what I did during this episode, go ahead and leave it down in the comment section down below. If you like the kind of content we're producing here, I'd love it if you could give us a thumbs up or even subscribe to the channel. We've had a lot more subscribers joining the channel recently, and I really, I mean, I am just ecstatic about that. And so thank you guys for joining. Really like having you around. And uh, one last note for kind of current events. 
stay safe and stay healthy, guys. Um, I know that right now this is the coronavirus going around is affecting a lot of people. And I have a few people in my life that don't have it, but are very susceptible to it. And so I've been quarantining myself pretty, uh, pretty strictly over this, or I'm trying to quarantine myself more strictly so that uh, I can try and protect those people around me. Um, I would be totally fine if I got it. I, I'm confident I would be totally fine if I got it, but that's not really the point. Um, so stay safe out there and stay healthy and uh, hope you guys have a great one. See you next week. Bye.